The video you're watching is a primer for assembling a Rockport XL steel grill gazebo from Backyard Discovery. After watching this video, you will have an accurate idea of what's entailed and if you still want to do it yourself or are better off hiring a factory recommended installer. They quoted me $750 and since it took me about 8 hours to assemble the gazebo, I feel I made the right decision doing it myself. This steel gazebo comes in three very heavy boxes. The shipping company was kind enough to place them in my garage, and then my gardener helped me carry them to the back deck. You'll need two strong backs as the boxes are too heavy and long to carry alone, even if you're a champion power lifter. Once laid on my back deck, the first thing I did was open the boxes to find the directions. The folks at Backyard Discovery provide an excellent instruction manual that's detailed, well illustrated, and easy to follow. They also provide a built app with step-by-step -step directions, but I didn't care for it. I found the animation hard to follow and a pain to start and stop the simulation at each assembly step. But you should check it out. Some people prefer to look at a cell phone screen over a booklet. I watched the animation and then I read the instruction manual from cover to cover the night before I built the gazebo. This way I had previewed every step of the process and understood clearly what I'd be doing the next day. I got a good night's sleep and started early in the morning. The first thing the manual tells you to do is open all the boxes and spread out the content. You need a lot of room to spread out all the stuff and while the boxes are numbered 1, 2 and 3. The items within the boxes are not packed in the order of assembly. I grouped similar items into discrete stacks to find what I needed easily. Since the parts come wrapped in numbered plastic bags, you can spot similar items and group them visually or, if you're as anal as I am, by part numbers like the instructions recommend. I placed all the small items on a table such as the hundreds of screws and my tools. The gazebo kit includes the screw bits you'll need and even an angle adapter for tight spots. You should also have a set of T-handled Allen or hex wrenches to hand tighten the screws and avoid stripping them with your impact wrench or screw gun. As you sort the parts and place them where you can find each component easily, leave them in their plastic wrapping since the numbering for each part is on that plastic and some components look similar. Every step in the assembly instructions includes part numbers. Lose those number references and you'll be lost in construction. I set up a plastic bag as a waste bag on a chair back because there are so many plastic bags to deal with as you move forward and it's not good to have them just lying all over the place blowing around in the yard. You should also take care to cut open the screw packages in such a way that you can leave the fasteners inside the packaging with the part number showing. Otherwise, you'll be fishing through hundreds of screws and pins of various sizes. Anytime you invest in organizing before you start building will play handsome dividends as the day goes on. The manufacturer recommends having a cordless drill with the appropriate bits which they supply, an open-end Allen wrench, Phillips screwdriver, ratchet set, rubber mallet, hammer, tape, framing square, and level. I'd add to this list a box cutter, WD-40, gloves, the metal gets hot, 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 and some of the parts are sharp, saw horses, and a step ladder. And at least on one step, you'll need an assistant. Step one, beam assembly. This entails splicing the front and back beams with 12 pan head screws. The two look very similar, so pay attention to the part numbers and make sure you join the right parts of the beams, right and left. I place the beam halves on my sawhorses to make assembly easier rather than crouching on the deck floor. I also check on every step the fasteners I need for each step. I remove them from the hardware package and I assemble the screws and washers so I'm all set. The pan head screws include two washers, a steel and plastic plastic washer. Using the plastic washer is important to prevent water from getting into the hollow beams and rusting them. Step 2. You'll lay two of the taller front posts on the ground and the front beam assembly across them to fasten the beam to the posts with four tricky little socket screws on each side of the beam. Make sure the posts face the correct direction which you can tell by looking at the screw hole pattern. The screw holes face up as you lay the beam down on top of the posts. Just keep looking at the drawings and double check your work at each step so you won't have to do any disassembly and reassembly as you move forward. I like taking it easy, sipping coffee, 
breathing and carefully reading each assembly step. I find redoing things very discouraging. If you don't rush, the process will go much faster. What's tricky about those socket screws I mentioned earlier is that they fit deep into a pocket and it's easy to drop one of them into a beam. To retrieve it, you'll need a magnetic retrieval tool or you'll have to disassemble the beam to fish it out. Take special care with this step, but if you lose just one, don't fret, the kit comes with an extra. Once the front beam and post assembly are complete, you'll move on to the back beam and post, square things off before tightening the screws, and then the fun begins in earnest. You'll need an assistant for the next step. The next step is to raise the post and beam assemblies between the two of you and then attach a side panel on each side to hold everything up. Once you've done that, suddenly, there it is, your glorious gazebo. It feels like you're almost done, but you're not. Far from it. You're just getting started. You have another thousand or so screws to go. You assemble the side panels and the two bar tops. There's a lot of screws in these steps and some don't line up perfectly. I found a quick squirt of WD-40 helps the medicine go down. I mean the screws cinch down. But don't tighten these as you'll need to square off the whole assembly and a little give helps when that time comes. After the side panels and bar tops are done, you'll place the two cross beams with the little tricky sockets again and then four corner corbels. Again, don't cinch down the screws just yet. The moment of truth. On page 22, the instructions will show you a squaring diagram. This is an X between the interior corners of the bar tops, indicating that when the assembly is square, the diagonals will measure exactly 11 feet and 1 half inches, or 33.64 centimeters. I actually prefer using centimeters because it's much easier to measure precisely to a specific number than when using fractions of an inch. But you'll need an assistant to hold the end of the tape, and thank God my measurements came up perfectly. What a relief. Next, I fasten the deck posts to the beefy 4x6 blocks I placed where the legs would go beneath my deck boards. The manufacturer recommends placing the gazebo on a concrete slab, although a wood deck is also permitted, but it's a hefty structure and you don't want it blowing off during a windstorm, so make sure you have a solid structure to fasten it to. I should disclose that this is not the point in assembly that the instructions recommend for anchoring the gazebo to its base, but because it moved around and I wanted to lock in the square and level, I went ahead and did it. The instructions will have you fasten fasten the gazebo to its base after it's completely built. You can decide for yourself, but I decided to secure things a few steps early just to lock in that square and level. I also leveled the bar tops and tightened all the screws at this point to keep things in place. Now that the gazebo was square and firmly attached to my patio, I started to assemble the roof framing by installing eight brackets, five into the front and three into the rear beams. You'll drop the rafters onto the brackets, making sure they face the right direction front to back with the screw holes up so you can later install the purlins across the top of the rafters. It gets tricky at this point. A back angled piece with a middle splice spans the entire rear beam. This holds the two end rafters right and left. These two are a bit different than the middle rafters. Another instance when carefully reviewing the manual and double checking the part numbers will help you avoid mistakes and retakes, which I hate. I like to do things once and once again careful and patient attention to the instructions will save you hours of agony. Next you must assemble the purlins. These come in two halves and join with a plastic plug and screws. I laid out all the purlins on my sawhorses right and left. Using a rubber mallet I set the plastic plugs and the end caps. Handle the purlins with loving care as they are long and wobbly in the middle where the plastic plug holds the two lanes together and it's easy to break that plug. I laid all the purlins atop the rafters so when I got on my stepladder they were right there to screw into place. You'll use those socket screws again. I'm not fond of them but they slip down into a hole leaving the surface of the purlins free of protrusion so the roof panels will lay flat. The roof panels go in next, one at a time, so you can reach all the screw holes from your ladder. You will not need to get on top of the roof, and you should not because you'll damage it. Do not strip the plastic wrap off the panels until you're ready to place each one. The label indicating the front of each panel is on that plastic, and you'll want to know. 
I had to move my ladder twice with each panel to get all eight screw locations. This required patience, especially after a full day of assembly. Where the roof overlaps where the two panels join, you may need to drill a pilot hole before driving your screws, as at this point you'll be going through several layers of sheet metal. I use an eighth inch bit for that. After you install all the roof panels, you'll say, wow, it's done. <laughs> but again, you're wrong. There's still a ways to go. Next, install the front, side, and back trim pieces along the roof's perimeter. This is an L-metal that covers the edge of the corrugated roof panels. In the middle, there's a splice cover, and at the corner pieces, there are, well, corner pieces. Now you can say you're almost done. All that's left and it'll take about an hour, is plugging the holes where you installed the socket screws and assembling the electrical hub. For the plugging of the holes, you insert the little pressure fitted covers and tap them lightly with a hammer or with a rubber mallet. Now, the gazebo has an electrical box with a few outlets and USB plugs. It's a nifty multi-port hub with a drop-down shelf to hold your phone or iPad. It's not essential, but it's a nice add-on. One problem with the setup is the manufacturer shows it installed about four feet up on one of the back posts, but the hub comes only with a 24-inch extension. I had an outdoor GFI protected outlet installed right next to one of the posts to plug in the hub, but the cord that came with the unit was about three feet too short, so I went to the home improvement store and bought an appliance pigtail. I opened the back of the hub and spliced five feet to the cord. I know this likely violated the manufacturer's warranty, but I also know how to splice a cable, so I wasn't worried about it. Backyard Discovery should supply at least five feet of cable or more. The hub comes with a paper template to make locating and drilling the fasteners easy. I drilled the fasteners with an eighth inch bit. I then used the little brackets and the screws that come with it to level and place the two brackets where they belong. And then you just sort of snap the hub into its location. It's a neat little detail. And the length of the cord was a very small disappointment in an otherwise exceptionally handsome, well-designed and strongly built gazebo with an unusually detailed and clearly illustrated set of instructions. It's a big job. It's also one an ambitious do-it-yourselfer can tackle. I encourage you to try because spending a day saving the $750 cost of professional installation feels like a good day's earning to me. I am very happy with my Rockport XL Steel Gazebo and if you get one, I believe you'll be happy with it too.